guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Lucy Lipsy, and we're back with another day of 31 days of Spooktober. I hope you're having a good day. I hope you're ready to sit down, listen up, put your feet up, and relax when I talk about this spooky place. Now, if you're in Wales and you went to a school in Wales, the likelihood are you've heard about this man quite a lot. This guy's a poet, he's from Swansea, and he made it big. Yeah guys, this is Dylan Thomas and his boat house in Lawn. There are many who say that a dog has its day and a cat has a number of lives. There are others who think that a lobster is pink and that bees never work in their hives. There are fewer, of course, who insist that a horse has a horn and two humps on its head and a feather who jests that a mare can build nests is as rare as a donkey that's red. Yet in spite of all this, I have moments of bliss, for I cherish a passion for bones. And though doubtful of biscuit, I'm willing to risk it. And I love to chase rabbits and stones. But my greatest delight is to take a good bite at a calf that is plump and delicious. And if I indulge in a bite at a bulge, let's hope you won't think me too vicious. So there's actually no record of the boathouse's existence until around 1984. And this is when it was rented out to a family of the Schofields. Obviously it's in a very picturesque place. It's in Lawn and it's right next to a kind of lake come see I don't know what you call these pieces of water. That's something I've never been able to get a grip on. You know like when people talk about like, oh it's a pond, it's a lake, I don't know. I it's just water. There's just water there. The road it's on was actually called Cliff Road. However, after Dylan Thomas they changed it to Dylan's War. Now Dylan actually first visited Lan with a friend of his who was also a poet and that was Mr. Glyn John. He said that that's when he fell in love with the location and he said that he'd like to return there one day to live. So he did end up moving there four years later with his wife Caitlin. And a fun fact about this house is he didn't actually buy it, it was gifted to him by Margaret Taylor who was a wife of a historian. The boat out actually inspired Roald Dahl to create a little writing pad in his gypsy house. Gypsy house was the name of Roald Dahl's house, if you didn't know that. But he actually used his shed, so he had a writing shed that was just down the road from his house. And it's been recreated these days, but he had a little writing shed where he would often go and just bash out a lot of poems, really. So just to dive a little bit more into Dylan Thomas himself rather than the boat house, he left school at 16, he went to work as a junior writer for South Wales Evening Post but he didn't stay there long, he didn't like the job, he just wanted to concentrate more on his poetry. He married Caitlin, pause for this surname because I love it, McNamara, Caitlin McNamara, then she went to Thomas, when he was 20 years old. They then went on to have two sons and one daughter, so there was Ironoi, Combe and Llewellyn. His fame rose in literary circles, however, his money didn't match, business was not going well and the family actually lived in poverty for a lot of Dylan Thomas's life. Fun fact about Dylan Thomas, his first poem was actually plagiarised. He was a BBC scriptwriter during World War II and he was actually exempt from fighting because of a lung condition he'd been left with after having bronchitis as a child and he grew up with asthma as well. So then he started to go and do tours. So this is basically poem reading tours. However, they came across more flamboyant performances than poems. And he did this like around the whole world, even in America. And then unfortunately when he was 39 years old, he died. It was after a long night of drinking. Dylan Thomas was known for his drinking. It was found that he had pneumonia, swelling of the brain and a fatty liver. Now his wife Caitlin didn't want to stay in Lan anymore, which you can understand she wanted to get away from the kind of memories of her late husband. So his mother Florence went to live in the boat house and lived there until she died. The house is now a museum and is owned by Carmarthen Council and like I said close by is a recreation of his writing shed and within the house is actually a lot of the same furniture that he had when he lived there, including his dad's desk. So it has a 1950s appearance. And when you walk in, you hear him reciting his poems over a tape that rewinds and rewinds all day. Fun fact, if you know of Undermilk Wood, you'll know of the place within it called Llaregeb. Now, I'm going to put an Indonesia. 
so you can see shall we gib put that backwards and that means bugger all another fun fact Dylan Thomas shared his birthday with Sylvia Plath. So, to dive into this a little bit, this is something I found very interesting. It doesn't look like Dylan Thomas haunts his own home as much as he haunts America. So he used to stay at the Chelsea Hotel quite a lot in New York. A guest who stayed there one night went down to the reception desk and explained that she'd had a sleepless night and couldn't stop hearing the noises of walking. She said she had this overwhelming fear of something but she didn't know what, it was just a fear. So she got up and she went to get herself a little drink just to calm her nerves. You get a bit nervous sometimes if you stay in somewhere that's not your normal home. As she walked towards the mirror there was a face looking back at her. No body, just a face a head in mid -air. She said it was grimacing at her. She described it as having theatre makeup. So white face, lipstick. And she said, I recognised this face the second I saw it, but I didn't know how. Chelsea Hotel actually have pictures hanging up of all the famous people have stayed there. She said, his name came into my head and I just thought, I'm gonna look it up. And when she looked his name up, she said that that was the exact face that was looking back at her the same sad eyes. He's also known for sitting at his local in New York when he stayed there and that's the White Horse Inn. He actually used to sit at the same table every single time he went there. It was in the corner and it said that if you go there now it's likely that you'll look over and just catch a glimpse of him sat there drinking his drinks. Right in on a piece of paper. So he's a busy guy because he does actually call back to the boathouse now and again but the person who occupies that the most is his mother Florence. She's known to haunt that building. Upstairs is known to have the chair scraping around the floor. The sounds of furniture being moved is normal in this building. Obviously it's been used as a museum, so when they leave at night they put the lights off. However, most mornings when the staff come back, they find it turned on, along with the sound of Dylan Thomas's voice playing on the recorder. People have been said to have gone to this boathouse, and when they leave, they just have this overwhelming feeling of creativity. They just want to write everything down and they've been known to leave and actually write really good pieces of poetry having no idea how to write poetry before they went there. They say that it sounds like someone's jumping up from a table really fast. You know like when you're raising your hand or just trying to run up to something it sounds like the chair's scraping back to make that noise. Books have been known to fall off shelves landing on pages that end up being the same over and over again. Pictures on the walls have been known to get swapped around randomly. Nobody can remember the correct order of where the paintings were when Dylan lived there, so perhaps he's putting them back in the rightful place. So guys, that's Dylan Thomas and his boat house and his mother Florence. Nobody's actually seen anyone there, but it is a haunting of the auditory kind. I think it's interesting anyway. There is said to be a female energy there, far more than there is a male energy, so that explains why people think that it's Florence there and not Dylan. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. If you have, please let me know in the comments, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and as always, guys, never let anyone dull your sparkle. It's not for me to say you